Quay, and welcome to the 2023 Powwow Hitch semifinals presented by RBC, Shopify, and MasterCard. Sunshine Tenasco and Adijnikaz, and I'm the founder of Powwow Pitch. I will be your host for tonight's Powwow Pitch Tourism and Startup Semifinals presented by the Indigenous Tourism Association of Canada, where Indigenous entrepreneurs from across Turtle Island will pitch for their chance to be named the Tourism and Startup Category winners for Powwow Pitch. The winners from the Tourism and Startup Categories will each receive $1,000 cash and advance to the finals where we will be giving away a total of $50,000 in cash prizes to help Indigenous entrepreneurs scale up their businesses. Thank you for joining us. Eight years ago today, I started Pow Wow Pitch with the vision of combining Indigenous culture and social innovation to create a platform to celebrate, showcase, and spotlight Canada's Indigenous entrepreneurs. Over the years, Pow Wow Pitch has supported more than 1,500 Indigenous entrepreneurs to take their businesses to the next level. And this week, we will support 130 more. Pow 2023 has already been a landmark year for Pow Wow Pitch as we welcome incredible partners to the Pow Wow Pitch family, partners that share our values. Thank you to our presenting sponsors. Thank you to our silver sponsors. Thank you to our seed sponsors. Thank you to our collaborating partners. With their support, we have unlocked new opportunities for Indigenous entrepreneurs and grew our prize and grant pools to more than $200,000. This summer, 2,400 Indigenous entrepreneurs pitched live at Powwow and submitted their video pitches from across Turtle Island from nations like the Salish, Inuit, Métis, Cree, Ojibwe, Anishinaabe, Mi'kmaq, and Navajo. We shortlisted the top entrepreneurs from each category and matched them with outstanding mentorship in the lead up to this week's semifinals. Every night this week, you'll have the chance to watch Pow Wow Pitch semifinals pitch to our esteemed panel of judges as they complete for a place in the Pow Wow Pitch finals taking place on October 19th. Prizes include $1,000 for the winner of each category and a $1,000 for the People's Choice Prize, a $5,000 alumni prize, $5,000 for third place, $10,000 for second place, and $25,000 for first place. Each semi-finalist has one minute for their pitch followed by two minutes of Q&A by the judges. Judges are evaluating the entrepreneurs based on presentation, execution and follow through, and the impact winning powwow pitch and the 25,000 would have on their business. Join the conversation online tonight using the hashtag powwow pitch. Let's begin by meeting tonight's esteemed panel of judges. Joining us this evening is Chad Garlow, Senior Manager of Indigenous Peoples Development Program at RVC. Kyle Brennan Shawinipinesi, Build Native Program Manager at Shopify. Stephen Nairn, Chief Investment Officer at Raven Indigenous Capital Partners. Teresa Ryder, Director of Partnerships at the Indigenous Tourism Association of Canada. It's time to meet the Tourism and Startup Semi-Finalists. Let's get started. Anine, I'm Tasha from the Métis Nation of Ontario and the owner of La Belle Cabane, a healing sanctuary. Building a tiny cabin for our family to heal through a stressful year and move is what initiated our business in 2021, a venture that's now recognized and featured by national media and tourism agencies. As purpose-driven individuals, our passion for creating authentic healing spaces led to remarkable growth. We started with five off-grid cabins and in May 2023, saw a 400% increase in sales and a profit margin of 60% with the launch of our private spa pods and gift shop, highlighting a significant local need. We'd now like to replicate our success and build a new communal structure in the forest to host events around storytelling, maternal health, youth training, and more. With sustainability and cultural revitalization in mind, 
we would extend this space to other establishments addressing a local gap with a dedicated environment for Indigenous events. Aligned with our goal for international tourism, this transformative space, space would foster ongoing healing and cultural understanding. Miigwech. Great job. Great energy on that one. Thank you. Did it in right, <laughs> right with seconds to spare. Um, <laughs> question, question for you. I didn't really get, um, where, where are you located? We're in Kingston, New Brunswick. Um, hi, Tasha. Hi. Uh, tell me about how you're going to expand the cultural space and what your intention is for engaging with international markets. Perfect. So how we would ex extend the space is with a separate building here in our forest. So we are already a healing venue. Um, but in terms of um, providing this space, we would connect first with our local organizations, plan some events there, and then also reach out to some of the organizations that we're members uh, with to see um, what our options would be there. But there's a huge need locally. So we're going to start there and then grow from there. Yeah, Tasha, fantastic presentation. You brought a lot of really good energy to that. So thank you. Um, my question as you're thinking about scaling up is what does the capacity utilization have to look like? In other words, what is the minimum uh, sort of number of rooms that have to be filled at any given time for the operation to be profitable? So for right now, um, in terms of our cabins, we have five, we have two spa pods, the building itself that we're looking for this pitch. Uh, we would have one space with capacity of up to 50 people is what we're estimating. So uh, events can range from, um, you know, 500 per event to 1,000, and we're estimating about five to 10 events a month. So the profit on that with our 60%, you know, consistent profit margin would be looking at about 25 to 10,000 a month. Hi there, my name is uh, Edward Ermine. I'm from uh, Sturgeon Lake uh, Cree Nation, uh, Treaty 6 territory. Uh, my uh, Powell pitch will be um, will be called uh, the Powell Express. It's a shuttle bus. Uh, I want to do uh, Powell uh, tours around Saskatchewan and hopefully maybe Alberta area like Edmonton and Calgary. But first, I want to start up small. I want to uh, drive uh, people like elders or even first time people like immigrants that are moving into uh, Saskatchewan to uh, learn our culture. What a great uh, place we, uh, to start would be the Powell Trail. And uh, we would uh, have a mustard point here in Saskatoon to pick them up probably like Thursday morning or Friday morning. And then we would uh, drive all the way to the Powell, get settled in in the hotels and um, we'd be uh, off to the Powell. Thanks, bye. <laughs> Just in the nick of time, Edward. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I seen that last second. <laughs> yeah, yeah, great job, great job with that. It's never easy presenting in front of the people yeah. you don't know. But uh, <laughs> yeah, my uh, my question for you is, uh, how much do you estimate that would cost to start up a, a sort of powwow business, travel business? Uh, yeah. First, you'd probably have to uh, buy uh, maybe like a start out with like a small van uh maybe like a 10 seater eight seater van uh start off small that way and then i would probably be the bus driver and then um they would have like a, a chaperone if it was like you know like students or uh, uh first time people moving to saskatchewan like a like a translator and stuff like that and then yeah yeah it would be probably I'd say like maybe uh, twenty thousand, give or take. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> nice to meet you. Thanks, mm -hmm. Edward. Uh, great presentation. Can you tell me a little bit about uh, what your cost per person estimates would be and uh, what your revenue generation plan is? Uh, it would probably be like maybe just like uh, like a bus, like um, say if you're going on a charter bus. Um, uh, be like a ticket like uh, for one person or uh, probably be like maybe $20 and then a family it would probably be like a family group if it was like a single mom with like two or three kids then uh, we'd have like a single group there for, for families and then um, uh, that's what probably would uh, help me with the gas and then 
um, maybe a little bit for uh, hotels if I have to stay in a hotel too, because like I, I just can't just drop them off and leave them there. <laughs> uh, I wish I could though, but it'd probably be kind of costly to drive back and forth, eh? like for gas and stuff like that. So I would have to like really budget for gas and then um, probably uh, for to stay in a hotel room. Yeah. My name is Quentin Pipestem, a three-time World Hoop Dance Champion from the Tsut in a Nation. I found my purpose through the arts and I aim to provide that same opportunity for others. Imagine visiting a fine arts center and strolling through an outdoor park of historical villages that will showcase the art and culture of nations throughout Turtle Island, becoming a catalyst for economic development through partnerships with other Indigenous entrepreneurs. It will create hundreds of jobs for my nation and the local area. It will invite tourists, schools, and businesses to take part in cultural educational programming. We are poised to begin our second phase, the launching of Pipestem Productions, the founding management company that will work towards building the Fine Arts Centre and Park, starting with artist representation. Winning will be used to equip our office, create and implement promotional materials, and launch our business with an inaugural, inaugural artist showcase event. The project will provide purpose for Indigenous people and foster reconciliation for all people, building our Fine Arts Centre from the park, from the people up. People who would come and visit for the day, or do you think you would also offer maybe week long more educational programs for people who are interested in, in maybe getting a deeper understanding? Well, for for the idea is that it would be just a daily a daily event, um, to for the tourism that comes to Calgary. There's over eight million tourists yearly, Calgary has projected, that come into the city, and since there is no um, major in, indigenous tourism um activity here in calgary this would be a must see must do so it would just be for like a daily event mainly but the idea is that we do have other local um indigenous um organizations or programs in and around calgary and we're hopefully if people wanted a longer more you know in-depth connection then we can connect them with those um with those people yeah, well, Quentin, thank you for that response. I just had a quick question. Is it more folk showcasing Indigenous artwork or is it more showcasing Indigenous culture through the village um, system that you mentioned? Actually, it'll be both. The, the Fine Arts Centre will be focused on promoting all genre of artists, as many as we can include. And then the, the, the park will be focused on the traditional villages of the times before before, uh, you know, in the past. Great job again. Um, question for you. Um, how do you plan to market? Oh, well, um, I do understand that this is a um, an ambitious project and marketing will come in different stages. Right now, Pipestone Productions is the initial um, startup for space. And um, one of the main goals is to start a uh, do a showcase with different artists and promoters and to um, launch our 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 pipestone productions arts management aspect with this and then from there develop from develop from there amazing thank you again honey bonjour awashko benesse anishinaabe dishkanzibi hi my name is tyler french my indigenous name is blue thunderbird and i'm from chippewa the thames first nation and i'm here to share my creation of celebration event facility and museum Celebration is located 25 minutes west of London, Ontario, conveniently minutes off the 401 and 402 highways. The tourism ministry indicates that an individual is willing to travel up to 40 minutes for a tourist attraction, enabling Celebration to be an Indigenous tourist destination for years to come. We offer land-based teachings across our 12 acres of event space with a focus on history and heritage, which has been passed down through the generations. Celebration has grown by 20% each year since our exception in 2020 and will continue to prosper. I have the vision and the energy that will preserve and protect our culture and traditions for years to come. But more importantly, I've created a safe space for our drummers, dancers, and singers to advance their skills and talents. With your help and vote today, judges, you will allow Celebration to build an outdoor washroom facility focusing on male, female, two-spirited, and gender equality restrooms. Chimigwech, many thanks. Bama Piminwa. Till we meet again. Two quick questions, Tyler. One is how many visitors you had uh, maybe in last year, 2022? Uh, and secondly, what the cost is per visitor to come and view the celebration? Yep. So our weddings vary from anywhere from $2,500 
all the way up to $6,000, depending on your customizability for your packages. And I'd say within our first year and a half, we had just under 10,000 visitors come through the property. And like I said, you can have anywhere from your school retreat to your work workshop. So we just secured uh, the Anishinaabek Nations, which is 39 Grand Chiefs of Ontario to come for a work retreat. And that was itself a, a $30,000 uh, engagement right there with our, uh, our ancestors and elders. Great presentation, Tyler. Um, quick question. Do you, do you partner with any travel agencies or busing companies to bring more people to your facility? Yep. Right so now? Great, great question. I do not have anything lined up with a busing company, but one thing we are looking at is a shuttle service uh, because London is a quick 20 minute, um, uh, like I said, 20, 25 minute um, travel destination. So it would be something that we do part partner up with, but our First Nation Reserve does have, have uh, bus transportation three times daily that does go to the core city of London, Ontario. And uh, we're working well, uh, have a great relationship with them as well from our First Nation to bring the urban indigenous community back home to the First Nation. Great job. Yeah, quick question for you. How many people uh, full-time do you employ now? Yep. So right now we are all, I'd like to say, volunteer part-time as we are family owned and operated. And I'd like to remind everybody, I'm a sole proprietor, but uh, my father, my brother, my fiance, and all the family members that put in countless hours and uh, sweat equity into the property would all be devastated to find out that I pay myself. So to this day, I have not paid myself and every ounce of energy and dime has been reinvested into the property as I believe in rising up the whole community and uh, our family together as one whole unit instead of just one individual. So I enjoy eating granola bars and fresh water and I look after the family <laughs> community first. I love that, love that. Thank you, sir. Uh, such a great presentation with all your energy and everything, it's so good. Yeah, I appreciate everybody's time today, and thank you for helping out my brothers and sisters across Terra Line. It means a lot to be here, and uh, thank you for your time and effort today. Miigwech. Yeah, Go miigwech, on. Tyler. Ani, my name is Sarah Sproul. I am from the Chippewas of Georgina Island. My business, Wayashkid, started in 2022, making and selling fur hats and mittens shipped across North America. We are on track to grow our sales by 50% this year. Based on customer requests and my lifelong passion for trapping and harvesting, we are expanding into the tourism sector. With my family, I manage a 22,000 acre trap line and three bear management units in my traditional territory. Beginning this winter, we are offering trap line tours with overnight accommodation at my new log cabin and trapper outpost camp. Through these all-inclusive tours, I will be connecting people to the land, teaching about our traditional ways, sustainable harvest, outdoor winter travel and cooking, as well as medicines. In the spring and fall, I will be hosting and guiding non-resident bear hunters. Weashkid provides a path for people to connect to the land in a unique way and preserve our traditions. The grand prize money would be used to bring power and water into my camp and toward my fees of incorporating the business. Miigwech. Uh, thanks, Sarah. Great presentation. Can you tell me a little bit about your current visitors? Um, do you have people that visit your space uh, or have visited the space in the last year? So this is a startup. The tourism portion is starting this winter. Um, the bear management unit, I do have bookings. I only acquired it four months ago. I have bookings for next spring and next fall. As far as the merchandise piece, we have been active since 2022. Yeah, Sarah, great energy in your presentation. Um, just on the merchandise side, do you sell everything uh, through your website or do you also have some wholesale uh, opportunities or, or arrangements with some retail outlets as well? Yes, we sell at some retail outlets. We are on Etsy through our website and I also go to trade shows. Thanks, Sarah. Um, quick question. Are you finding any challenges, you know, with with fur with western society it's kind of a a taboo with us we keep warm are you finding any struggles with um finding non with, with that whole situation yeah. So far, people have been extremely understanding and open to myself. I think maybe I don't look like your uh, typical trapper. And so in that way, I have an opportunity to chat more with people. I have spoken at conferences as well and certainly had the opportunity to have people see fur and our traditional ways in a new light. Yeah. Great job. I'll try to sneak in a question here before the end. How many how many units of the of, of fur do you sell usually per year? Um, well, I'll go off of revenue. So last year our revenue was twenty four thousand, and this year we're on track to do close to forty thousand in product sales. 
Great, Sarah, as we're just coming to the end of time, just wanna say thanks for your energy and for your pitch um, and for sharing your story with us and wish you luck as it goes on. Thank you so much. Great job. Thank you. Hello, Paul Wall Pitch judges. My name is Lyndon Jonsky and the at-risk youth of Saging First Nation are counting on you to consider my pitch, which is called, uh, awesome, which is a gaming lounge slash gaming uh, video game store called Link Up Gaming, where I have purchased eight Xbox Ones, four gaming monitors, uh, one gaming chair and one gaming headset. Um, the ways I would uh, use the money is to purchase two state-of-the-art racing sims, five PS5s, uh, 10 controllers, um, controller accessories, and video game titles. The ways I would make money is by a $5 entrance fee to access the uh, gaming lounge, uh, food and drink sales, and video game sales. I plan on becoming profitable by the end of one month, assuming I have 10 customers per day just for the gaming lounge alone. Um, as to address the video game store, um, there's a need for it. Ah, oh, I, I was almost there. I was almost there. I was very at the very end of it. I was just about to, I fumbled out because of the nervousness. I've never had to do this before. <laughs> it's all good. You did a great job. You brought the energy, you brought the good vibes, you brought a positive smile. You did a great job. Um, I got a question for you though. Um, what's the total like, youth population in Sagin that would like, or the prospective co customers of the sort of uh, video game shop and youth center? That I do not know, but there is 720 households in Sagin. Okay. Assuming they all have one child, so that's roughly 720. <laughs> but I just know the household <laughs> number. Yeah. Thanks, Lyndon. Great pitch. Um, what are your plans for upkeep of the space um, and kind of maintaining your revenues post-launch? Uh, revenue, I would continue to buy equity um, in-store inventory. <clears throat> I would keep the 50% uh, used that or the in initial um, cost of the thing that I sold to buy another one. And then I want to know what inspired you to do this. What's the backstory on this? Well, the backstory is I'm 38 years old now, and this has been an, in here since I was 18. So it's 20 years in the making. And it's to keep the youth out of trouble because I was getting into trouble before. And it kept me out of trouble. Great idea, Lyndon. So what do you do in these people you know get older find a job and buy their own xboxes and game systems the thing is it's quite boring playing by yourself it's nice to just be able to go to a facility if you can see my gaming thing here a facility where you could visit your friends instead of just uh online with by yourself awesome thank you uh, yeah, appreciate it. I, I come from a res where we had a, we had like a youth center that had a gaming mm -hmm. facility and you know, we used to have tournaments and everything and it's like a huge part exactly. of the community. So I definitely see the need for it and, and definitely appreciate it. But uh, and uh, just want to thank you for for pitching with us and uh, and congratulating you on, on on getting this this far. Yes, thank you. It was very nervy, nervous. Made me nervous all of this today. <laughs> Hi, my name is Cherise Bruno Métis Cree from Northern Alberta, but I reside in Lethbridge. I'm the creator of Be Beloved Beadwork, custom loom style beaded lanyards. Beloved Beadwork was officially created in 2021 as part of my healing journey to give hope to others and to show them that there is light through the darkness. I'm extremely emotionally invested in each custom creation that I make. My product is handmade by me, even my looms. Um, my craft takes time, patience, but I do it with passion to create a final piece my customers will love. My clientele has doubled since 2021 from my Instagram page attending local markets. I make 75% profit from each product sold. The powwow pitch is life-changing for Billy Love at Beadwork. If I was to win, it would put my product in stores, buy sufficient materials um, to keep up with order demand, and to completely focus on my business because I have my first baby on the way. I'm humbled and grateful for this opportunity. Thank you. Thank Super you. Super exciting. Um, I got a question for you. How are you currently getting your products out? Um, Instagram online um, is my most clientele and I tend local markets. 
that's um the second but usually i can do online custom um orders great job sharice uh can you tell me a little bit about what your sales to date are um my sales um like numbers or just um it depends on it goes from $15 to 120. So depending on the custom, the size, how many beads go into it, whatever they would like. Sharice, great presentation. Um, as you scale up and obviously have a baby soon, are there opportunities where you could share the skills that you've developed with some youth who could help you on the assembly going forward? Yes, definitely. I would like to have more people like when I have a baby on mat leave, I'm completely focused on my business and I want people under me. I do teach as well. Um, right now, it's just coworkers and friends, but I am teaching others. Awesome. <clears throat> Great job, Sharice. Both of my daughters do um, beadwork as well. Have you considered um the looming is you know an art in itself have you considered other forms of beadwork like medallions and earrings and that stuff or are you specialized in lanyards i'm specialized in lanyards but i do want to start beading jewelry that is one of my goals is next is earrings uh, is what i'm going to teach myself when I'll, i'm on mat leave awesome great um great presentation i know it can be nervous in front of four strangers but you did good and enjoy your sleep well well, you still can. Thank you so much. <laughs> I appreciate it. No <laughs> Hi, my name is John Halicott. I'm from Little Red River Reserve, Treaty 6, Saskatchewan, Canada. Um, I started Natively Vibing a few months ago. It's a clothing brand, but we're so much more. Um, my goals are positive impact on the youth. I quit smoking, quit drinking. I battled with addiction myself. So I'm trying to he show people there's a way out of it you can heal. I've worked in group homes and with our youth for the last six years. I'm 26 right now. So working with our youth, I see this, they, they feel not taken care of. So hopefully through this clothing brand, because 10% go to our youth. So with that, I want to host events, do stuff for the community. Like last week, I did a raffle for two fair, uh, three fair tickets, uh, you know, little stuff like that, just to bring a little light into the community, because it's just such the norm here to be addicted and there's so much more to life than drinking, doing drugs. And that's what I'm trying to show my people and our people. We're going to heal together by talking like this. Feel great. I want everyone to feel as great as me. And that's the whole goal of natively vibing. You know, you should be vibing. <laughs> great. Great job, John. You got me vibing. Um, <laughs> uh, so obviously there's a lot of indigenous streetwear companies that are out there. How do you plan to stand out? Um, honestly, uh, it's crazy. That's like the, the feedback has been amazing. So what I do is like, uh, honestly, I want to say me, but the reach I have, um, uh, like honestly me and like the vibes I got, like, I want to go, I got to become like a motivational speaker. So that's kind of my goal. Talk to people, spread the message so much more than clothing brand. Love it. <laughs> Thank you so much for your presentation. Um, where are you currently selling your products? Uh, right now, people just message me on Facebook, and I kind of just go ship them out, mail them wherever. I go to shows. I work two jobs right now, so it would kind of be nice if I could quit these jobs because I have so many shows I need to go to. So if I get this $1,000, I could uh, get more inventory because I've been invited to so many shows, but my inventory is kind of lacking, so that's kind of my dilemma right now. <laughs> John, the story of your why is amazing. you got a great founder story and a great reason to be doing this. So thank you for sharing that. Um, besides t-shirts, do you guys make any other stuff at this point? Um, I got hats going That's and I got, right. uh, cool. I just made some stickers on my cricket machine too. That took forever. I'm, I'm nice. so bad with art. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, definitely. You have the energy, um, John. I see you have screen printing and embroidery. Do you do that in-house or is that something you have to ship out out of um your shop uh right now i pay someone to do it and the, my uh unfortunately i have to order in intervals of 12 and i keep getting it like people want two t-shirts someone wants 12 so if i could win the 25 i could be self-efficient which is my goal instead of relying on someone <laughs> awesome kyle to you <laughs> thanks yeah man um i don't think we have enough time for another question but i just want to really encourage you and keep going and and striving toward like i started in streetwear it's where i began it's where i learned my entrepreneurial teeth 
it's such a great self-expressive medium and opportunity to connect with so many people. So I really, really encourage you to keep going and keep vibing, man. Okay, thanks, Sam. Appreciate that. <laughs> Hello, my name is Kona, and I'm a 21-year-old two-spirited fashion designer, stylist, mother, and artist. I'm from Barrier Lake, Quebec, but I currently live in Montreal. Love Coco is a handmade indigenous streetwear brand that started in 2019, but making its debut in 2023. I created Love Coco so that modern indigenous peoples can take pride in their culture and express it through fashion. Love Coco will transform indigenous clothing without culture appropriation and making it as accessible to everyone. My goal is to inspire Indigenous youth by collaborating with major brands, pop up in different communities, or even having my own brand, uh, my own store. If I were to be selected, I would be able to have a full team of beaters, seamstress, purchase sewing machines, uh, materials, and continue to inspire the youth because it doesn't end here. and. I just wish to continue that. Sincerely love Coco. Oh, great job. So Thank amazing. You. So inspiring. <laughs> um, how do you plan to share, share your fashion? Um, as of right now, I'm on TikTok and I've been posting my um my clothing pieces through each like every time I finished one, I would post one. So here's my first one, along with my second, my third. And these, uh, this one is completed, uh, but this one is uh, soon to be completed. And if you can see right there is a little handbag that I'm beating right now that says Love Coco on it. So with every post that I've been doing on TikTok, TikTok they have gone viral, including this one. And this one with, uh, this one has over 30,000 views. This one has 50K views. Um, and my other ones are just normal, like normal shared with everyone. And that's really Amazing. my main focus is on TikTok. Amazing, Midwich. Oh, I forgot this hat. Sorry. <laughs> I got, <laughs> completely forgot about that. <laughs> that's great. Thanks, Coco. Um, can you tell me a little bit about how you plan to scale up your business? Um, I plan on upscaling it by continuing to attend to powwows, um, going to um, indigenous uh, events and that include like tournaments. Sorry, it's my child in the background. <laughs> Um, going to tournaments, just that and that involve more um, Indigenous peoples, um, just to really get it known out there. And there's just also one fashion show that I want to attend next year in June. Um, that's called the Wave Fashion Show, and I want to contribute to that as like, like to represent the Indigenous communities as it's uh, located in Montreal. Since it's a multicultural place, I want to bring that alive out there through that. Yeah, Kona, great presentation. Um, I just wanted to know if what we see hanging behind you, these are all one of a kind creations or there's yeah, an opportunity for you to get creations. these made in small batches. Just given how many people are looking at them on TikTok, whether you could order them in groups of 10 or 100 and sell more, whether you just want to continue one at a time. Um, it honestly depends what you order because my one-time pieces are the beaded pieces because since beading takes a lot more time, but since the vest that I had made myself, these would, would be more like a, of a production to be like ordered by like 5, 10 to 15. Hello, my name is Alex Soup. I hail from the Blood Tribe Nation of Southern Alberta and currently I'm a published author and ordained owner of Supremo Publishing Company. Through my journey as a publisher I, and an author, I have made friendships with other Indigenous authors and have made a close-knit bond with my publisher slash friend who has taken me under her wing as an intern to learn the ropes of becoming a publisher, my, publisher myself. Sorry, My proposed company will be fully committed to the role of creative writing, visual artistry, computer graphics and designers, and of course, audio production and engineering. Through Supremo Publishing, I will com combine all these valuable skills to showcase the world, the contemporary Indigenous ways of the limitless possibilities of talent out there. My platform will allow people from all over the world to access and discover Indigenous content such as books, audiobooks, podcasts, and digital media. Supremo Publishing will enable the youth who did not have such a chance to experience the Indigenous ways to reconnect with their culture through fun and exciting ways. But that is not all I want to do for the Indigenous youth. I want to surprise, provide jobs and career opportunities that will utilize the skills that they learn in post-secondary schooling. Thank you. That's
Thanks for that, Alex. That's great. I'm just looking at the 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 illustration in your background. It said Midnight Storm, Moonless Night. Is that say Indigenous horror stories? Yeah, that's actually my uh, first book. What's your what's your genre, your wheelhouse of of writing? Uh, right. Well, this book it's uh, Indigenous horror. Um, I'm working on a fantasy and uh, a romance novel at the same time right now. Awesome. Where can I get that? Uh, indigenous or in sorry, <laughs> uh, chapters and they go in the go, uh, Amazon, and you can go through the company. Uh, they're violent uproot books. Yeah. The easiest, easiest would be in the chapters and they, they go. Amazing. So, if you won, so if you won the whole entire power pitch thing and you got 25 grand, what would you do with it? Start my company because right now I'm uh, doing an internship with my publisher, you know, she sees the potential in me so i've been doing this for about four months it's a one-year program yeah so she's just showing me the ropes and whatnot you know uh internet uh audio books all that's all the good stuff right so yeah, it's pretty a lot to take in but I, I like it sounds good thanks alex and congratulations on your pitch um who are your competitors in the space currently uh there's other indigenous uh guys i'm not too sure to be honest but uh I would like to see other other guys starting their own publishing companies. Yeah, Alex, thanks a lot for your pitch and congrats on getting your first book published. I wanted to ask you on a more personal note, like when is the moment that you really felt this was your calling? Like what has inspired you not only to write, but to create uh, an opportunity for other writers to follow in your footsteps? Well, when I went to the first book, book launch, it wasn't my book, it was uh, with the company I'm with. And uh, just seeing all the people, different nationalities there, and then just the pride that they have in their books. And I want to showcase that, right, with my people, get their talents and works of fiction out there and nonfiction. Okay, Mr. Nitaniko Kiaiaki. Hello, my name is White Bear Woman. I am from the Blood Tribe First Nation. I am the owner operator of Ikinapsi Soul Healing. With my business, I chose to modernize traditional healing by virtually allowing access to teachings, reconnecting to roots, and different healing modalities from, from the comfort of your home. Distant healing by stepping out of the box, if you will. First Nations are wanting to reconnect and let go of anger, injustice, childhood traumas. I found my gifts this way. Out of trauma comes gifts. My goal is to empower First Nations across Turtle Island, as I am no healer, merely a helper. Judges, will you help me with guiding First Nations youth and adults out of their trauma in a healthy way? How many clients would you need in a year to to say you were successful so how many is it a subscription system is it one-off teaching sessions what's the business model behind this i'd like to eventually incorporate an app um, my goal is to offer retreats to travel to different first nations across turtle island to offer retreats with different healers virtually offering different teachings different traditional um like herbal herbal stuff um yeah all land-based teachings is what i love to offer yeah, well. yeah great job again so how, how would you price that how would you sort of um price your services so right now i bring in about just under a thousand dollars every three months keeping in mind that I, you know, need to more time. Right now I still work. Um, I'm trying to build this business. So I'm still trying to work. Obviously this is why I'm here, but um, offering the retreat, I feel that is going to really bring in a lot of revenue, um, a lot of healing for adults and youth, reconnecting to their youth, um, reconnecting to their roots, sorry. A lot, you know, growing up in the system, growing up with um, family that don't really know. So that is my goal. Do it real quick. Um, how many customers or clients do you currently work with? I have a lot. So I offer some samples on my um, social media platforms, but I do have clients that 
are reoccurring clients. Um, I've been offering um, with um, health insurance as well. So that's another way that I, I bring in clients, but I get a lot through social media offering that sample. My name is Kim Koizan from Teltan First Nation, owner of Nature Spirit Soaps, where I make hair and skincare products with traditional medicines, which target common skin irritations and joint pain. My passion and inspiration for this business started when my grandma got sick with cancer and I began to research traditional medicines and their benefits, making fireweed and chaga tea for my grandma. In addition to her treatments, today she's 94 years old and cancer free. I established my business earlier this year, and after two years of research, I've grown my business with in-person and online sales. If I were to win the 25K from Pow Wow Pitch, I'd increase my inventory to provide products for wholesale and distribution across Turtle Island, eventually opening my own retail store. I like to host nature walks and workshops to share knowledge for use and respectful harvest of traditional medicines so people can help themselves or someone they love on their healing journey. <laughs> yeah, Kim, I'll just applaud to you. That's a really great presentation. So I, I had a, I had a bit more, I had like my whole research or my little spiel put out, but I hope I covered, yeah, you covered as much everything. as I could in the time frame. One minute, one minute is not a lot of time. So I'll, I'll ask the first question here. Um, it's a two part question. One is I'm just curious as to where you source your ingredients and I guess the teachings um, that help you identify the ingredients and whether you make all of this at home or whether you have a place where you can put things together outside of the home. I, I do uh, make the products myself and I do harvest a lot of the plants on my own when I spend time out in nature and ones that are not local to the Yukon I'll outsource from other provinces within Canada like for cedar I'd get from BC where they grow abundantly there. Thanks for thanks for that, Kim. Um, Stephen actually took my question. I was going to say, do you grow a lot of your own um, medicines in house? Do you have any partnerships with local um, greenhouses that could grow in their space for you that aren't available to you in the Yukon? Um, surprisingly, a lot of these plant species are very commonly grown and considered pest weeds. A lot of people have them growing in their own backyard and don't even know the, the healing benefits that they hold. So I don't have a greenhouse that I'm growing, but I do. I have approached the Yukon University to um, start collecting herbs in order to host workshops eventually and try to use their resources to grow some plant species there too. Awesome. Everything we need is in our backyard. That's what I was taught. It is. Yes, that's for sure. Yeah. Well. Again, um, question for you. I know you mentioned the research. I'd be interested to hear a little bit more about that, the research you did for two years. Uh, yeah. So I'm also a student in renewable resource management. So that gets me out on the land quite a bit as well. And we also do a lot of plant identification. Um, so that kind of started, I knew that my grandma was sharing with me some traditional medicines used by her and her parents growing up, but there wasn't a whole lot of research uh, on that. So I wanted to look a little deeper. And if there was those plants available, I wanted to see what other plants had healing benefits too. So that's just kind of inspired me and every plant that I see in nature, I'm like, I wonder what this can do. So I, that just fuels me to look more into it. Love it. Great job. Great work, everyone. Congratulations to all of our semifinalists who pitched in the tourism and startup categories. Thank you for courageously sharing your passion, purpose, and vision with all of us. You are all so inspiring and making a big impact in your communities. Now is the time we've all been waiting for. Let's start with the tourism category. The judges scored, deliberated, and selected the tourism winner. This was an incredibly tight race, so the judges would also like to provide a few acknowledgement and recognize an entrepreneur who earned honorable mention and the runner-up. The judges would like to provide an honorable mention to 
Tyler French, founder of Celebration Event Facility and Museum. Tyler, the judges applaud your positive energy and passion for providing beautiful experiences. Great work and keep going. Your work is so important. The runner up for the Pow Wow Pitch Tourism semifinals is Tasha Robitoy, a founder of La Belle Caban. Tasha, you had a fantastic presentation and provided a very clear value proposition. And the winner, of the Pow Wow Pitch Tourism Semi-Final, who is also taking home $1,000 tonight and is advancing to the finals is Sarah Spruill, founder of West Chaod. Congratulations, Sarah, for moving on to the finals and winning the tourism category. Great work, Tyler, Tasha, and Sarah, and congratulations to all of our tourism semi-finalists. You're all leading the way in growing the indigenous tourism sector, and we are so very proud of you all. Now onto the startup category. The judges scored, deliberated, and selected the startup winner. This was an incredibly tight race, so the judges would also like to provide a few acknowledgements and recognize the entrepreneurs who earned honorable mentions and the runner up. The judges would like to make an honorable mention to Cherise Bruno, a founder of Beloved Beadwork. Cherise, your engagement with youth is inspiring and the judges applaud you for your passion to bring others together. Great work. The judges would also like to provide an honorable mention to Alex Soup, founder of Supremo Publishing. Alex, your passion shine bright and we are excited to watch you grow. Great work. Now, the runner up for the Pow Wow Pitch Startup Semifinals is Kim Koishan, founder of Nature Spirit Soaps. Kim, you provided a well thought out and passionate presentation and we wanna see you keep going. Great job. And the winner of the Pow Wow Pitch Startup Semifinal, who is also taking home $1,000 tonight and is advancing to the finals is Kona Slays, founder of Love Coco. Congratulations, Kona, for moving on to the finals and winning the startup category. Great work, Cherise, Alex, Kim, and Kona. And congratulations to all of our startup semifinalists. It's incredible to see all of the early traction you all have received. And we're all looking forward to cheering you on as you grow as startups. Awesome work. Remember, if your favorite entrepreneur didn't make it through, you can still vote on them to win People's Choice Prize. The entrepreneur that receives the most votes by September 17th will receive $1,000 and advance to the finals. Visit powwowpitch.org forward slash vote to vote now. Thank you judges for your support, excellent questions, and for selecting the winner to move forward to the finals. Please share your final reflections. Yeah, on behalf of Shopify, I'd like to thank Power Pitch for inviting us back and uh, giving us a front row seat to the incredible showcase of entrepreneurship that uh, happens every year, um, particularly within this round of tourism and uh, and startup businesses. Um, it was an incredible, um, challenging, and stacked cohort, I would say, and uh, and I'm really. Uh, I'm really thankful for, for this experience. Well, thank you to the Powell Pitch for having the Indigenous Tourism Association of Canada back as judges. What an amazing and inspiring group of entrepreneurs that we've seen here today. And I think I can say on behalf of all the judges, congratulations on another successful year. And to all the entrepreneurs, good luck. Yeah, on behalf of Raven Indigenous Capital Partners, I want to thank uh, Powell Pitch once again for assembling an incredibly talented cohort of entrepreneurs. As judges, we face a very difficult task. And I think this year, more than any other year, the thread that's run through these presentations is just the willingness of these entrepreneurs to use their businesses to not only share knowledge, but lift up Indigenous people. It was a very inspiring day today. So thank you. Absolutely. And yeah, I want to thank you to Paul Pitch for having me be a part of this experience. And congratulations and good luck to all the entrepreneurs. This is just the start of something amazing. Can't wait to see where you all take these amazing ideas. Yeah. Thank you, judges. 
Thank you to our presenting sponsors, RBC, Shopify, and MasterCard. Thank you to our silver sponsors, Export Development Canada, the Indigenous Tourism Association of Canada, the National Association of Friendship Centres, the National Aboriginal Capital Corporations Association, Canada Post, Meta, Jelly Academy, Futurepreneur, Aritzia, and Raven Indigenous Capital Partners. Thank you to our mentors, volunteers, and judges for your support in bringing the 2023 Powwow Pitch online and across Turtle Island this evening. Thank you also to our executive producer, Victoria Lennox, our creative producer, Cyprian Shellenkavich, commu our communications coordinator, Keely Thompson Cook, and our programs coordinator, Brett Burrow, for bringing our vision to life. A huge congratulations to tonight's entrepreneurs for their great pitches. And thank you to our viewers tonight for cheering on Indigenous entrepreneurs through Pow Wow Pitch. Let's keep the conversation going using the hashtag Pow Wow Pitch. Also visit powwowpitch.org forward slash box to learn more about the 2023 Pow Wow Pitch mailer box filled with products from Pow Wow Pitch entrepreneurs. Join us again tomorrow at 6 p.m. Eastern Time for the Knowledge Services Category Semifinals and each evening this week from 6 p.m. Eastern Time on powwowpitch.org. Until tomorrow, I am your host, Sunshine Tanasco, signing off. Mi gwech kibija yeg non gomenokshik.